this is behind the flash, and uh, my first guest is Melissa Fontaine. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing, Mr. Flash? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. That's great. You're the first black male, female, to be first black woman mm -hmm. to be the student association president. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Um, it definitely feels amazing. It's actually funny because when I was first running, I didn't know that there never was a black woman. I think there at some point was maybe a Latina. But um, when I started running, that's when those, those um, I guess, rumors or those things kind of started to come into play. And for me to actually like accomplish that, it was very rewarding because, I mean, me as well as a lot of other colored women, we do honestly believe that black women are double oppressed. So to kind of be able to be in that, you know, that student government setting in like one of the most political cities in New York, which is Albany, New York, the capital itself. So for me to kind of accomplish that in this kind of community itself, for me, it was great. And I felt like that allowed me to kind of set, you know, set the path for other women coming into like these positions as well. What made you want to run? Um, so I've always been involved. I can never say that I was ever a shy person because that wasn't me. I wish that was my story at first so that I have a story, but no. But um, I just always had a passion for like serving my community, being involved, whether it's through like programs, whether it's through community service, and it's always found an opportunity to be around diverse people. Um, so my freshman year when I first got here, I had like one or two friends who like paved the way for me. They were like, oh yeah, Juju, which is my nickname. They were like, oh Juju, like I know you're like very spunky, you're very creative, you're very this, you're very that. Like I feel like SA would be the perfect place for you to kind of apply those skills and further develop them. So I was like, all right, student government, you know, I didn't really do that in high school because there really wasn't a huge platform for that anyway. So I felt like that would be something new for me. So why not get involved in it? And um, since then, I came into the office and like, I'm a very joyous person. So it's like, hi, everybody. How you doing? How you doing? And they're like, who is this girl coming out of this office thinking like she knows everybody? But like for them, they were like, oh, yeah, she must be a sophomore. She must be a junior. So they're like, meet me, introduce themselves. And they're like, oh, like, how long have you been here? And I'm like, two days. And they're like, wow, like it's kind of very really pleasant to see like a young woman like yourself, you know, really coming into an office and bringing such a great spirit in here. Like I see a lot in you. So I feel like to come into like a new university as large as this one and to have like people who are older figures who are doing things that you couldn't imagine yourself doing. And they're looking at you and telling you like, you're going to be great. It was like, I want to be that. Like, what can I do to be that? So I like studied the presidents like Francis. Um, I can't remember his last name, but Francis, he was president in my freshman year. Definitely took me under the wing. Literally, I met him to buy a ticket to a party. <laughs> And like after that, he kind of like, you know, took us all in, had like a lot of conversations with us saying like, what are your interests? What do you want to do? Like, like what are your interests? What do you and for me, it was like, what do you I had an idea of all those questions. 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 I had an idea of all and the campus on the whole. So, you said your nickname is Juju. Where did yep. that name come from? Um, I would think I was like seven years old, and like it was me, um, a past best friend of mine, and her cousin, and we were just watching some movie on the TV. We were in the living room, and they were like, "So, like, what's your nickname gonna be?" I was like, "Julissa." They were like, "All right, so how about Jerger?" I was like, "That's ugly. We're not gonna do that." And then Jojo. It started off for like a, I guess like two months being Jojo, and then somehow it just transitioned to Juju. I don't know where it derived from. They just started calling me that. I felt like it fit my personality, so I ran with it. Uh, what's your background? What's your nationality? Where are you from? So I'm from, I'm, I'm from the island of Dominica, so I'm not sure if you all know, but um, Hurricane Maria was, some, was, was um, a hurricane that impacted my country as well. Um, it's a very small island. No one knows about it. Whenever they see me and I try to explain it, they say, oh yeah, you must be Latina. You're Dominican. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm West Indian. I'm Caribbean. I'm Afro-Caribbean as well, um, but I have a lot of pride in my country, especially because it's not a very well-known one, and I know that the resources there are amazing, the people are amazing, the culture is amazing, so I'm hoping that as I grow, I'll be able to kind of develop the attention that goes to that country as well. That is great. Uh, your uh, environment, how do you think your environment has helped shape you become the person that you are today? So, I'm from the Bronx. Hey, where are you from? I'm from Long Island. What part of Long Island? Unionville. I don't know too much about Unionville. <laughs> All right. But I'm from the Bronx, and um, I mean, like I said, my, my environment, I mean, I kind of bounced like house to house, area to area, uptown a lot. So I've been in like a couple of different places uptown. Um, it's one of those communities where there's all different kinds of people, you know, like some people who are falling susceptible to like the negative things that are going on around them because you feel like, you know, what else is there that I can do? You get me? I'm already struggling financially. I'm watching my mom struggle, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. So you see like a lot of young males falling susceptible to like 
all the negativity that's going on around them, the violence, you know, the criminals throwing up, it's like, you know, so that's already there. Then you have people who are really ambitious that want to get out. But I mean, once again, it's like you can't really compare different kinds of use because it depends on what you've experienced to make you want to further yourself or how you even manage your time to find ways to avoid doing bad things so that you can, you know, resurface yourself and kind of find purpose in your family to further do well in school. So for me personally, I mean, I found a lot of passion in my community because I feel like that's something I want to go back to. I want to help different kinds of people. I kind of want to pave the way for those who feel like there's no other way but to just maybe sell drugs or pursue other criminal acts because they feel like that's all there is to be. You get me? It's like you don't really see a lot of male figures, you know, in your life, you know, pursuing entrepreneurship or teaching you financial literacy. You know, it's not really in your community centers. Like no one of the projects is really doing that. And if they do live there, they're not showcasing that. So I feel like it's kind of unfortunate that these young males and these young women are not seeing those figures to even want to aspire to be them. And hopefully I can be that person for them. What was your emotions when you found out that you won the auction? Oh, I cried. <laughs> um, not that I, it wasn't like out of nerve. It wasn't. My, it wasn't a matter of me being nervous. It was just a matter of fact. Like it just felt good to accomplish something that I know I worked really hard for. Um, people kind of felt like. I was definitely gonna win and they would always say, I don't know why you're trying so hard, like dude, like you're gonna win. Like there's there's no other way for this to go. Like you are indeed like the next president. But for me it was just like, no, like it's not about that. Like I wanna know that I really worked for something, I campaigned hard and I'm learning through the experience of me even campaigning to begin with. So for me to like really like, you know, get creative, you know, really sit down with my vice president, create a plan. Like I was doing things to prepare for this that I never had to do before. That was the biggest challenge for me. It's like, what makes my campaign different than somebody else's? Not just in terms of my, like the fellow candidates, the fellow people who were running, but just in general, like what sets my campaign and my story apart from anybody else who was running for anything? So I felt like for me to like really go that hard and for me to establish like record votes, like apparently like we had like the highest number of votes in like I say history, whatever the case may be. So for me, it was just like, it just felt great. It was like, I worked for something, I achieved that. People acknowledge that and they know like, I'm not like someone who just like says, oh, it's there for me. Like I and D work for what I get. So what do you think stood out to students and voters in the election? For my campaign in particular? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly? For those that already know me, they know how I am. Like they know like Juju's extra involved. They just call me Mrs. My Involvement or whatever the case is. Cause like I always like even though I may not necessarily be a direct member of an organization, if I have time in my schedule past eight thirty p.m., like I'm gonna find my way to go to another organization's program or I posted like numerous programs. Like I've always been involved in other people's clubs and their organizations. Like watching their dreams, watching them, watching their passions watching what they want to do to serve the community. So I feel like people always knew like that was something that I love to do and they appreciated me for that. And like being an RA, it's like, it's like being a mentor, depending on how you play your cards, of mm -hmm. course. Like I was on a freshman quad. And for me to be a sophomore and then a junior on a freshman quad, like, and me enjoying people like just naturally, it's like, why would I not serve as a mentor to those people? Mm -hmm. So for me to kind of be around them and to like nurture them and watch them grow and to get like get more involved, you know, better themselves academically, like people learn to appreciate that because for them they know I'm not getting anything from that. No one's paying me <laughs> to like, you know, tell you like, hey, get take this class or do this or do that. Like I don't I don't get paid to tell you that, you get me? But it's like people learn to appreciate that. So I feel like just me and my character and me being a genuine person, I feel like that's what stood out during my campaign. Who was the first person that you told when you went to KP? <laughs> um, I don't know. It would either be, it would either be Jarius, um, another young man named Benny Poy, or Felix. Mm. It was one of those three. I'm just not really sure. <laughs> or maybe even Francis. It was one of them. So, uh, is there a person or someone that inspires you? No. I don't have one person that inspires me. Really. Really? I have, I feel like, I feel like a lot of times people raise you telling you that you need to find that one person who's going to be that figure for you to like imitate so that you can be who you want to be. But I don't think that's true. I don't think that's real. I feel like you should always, I feel like you should, you should always sustain your character, but still look into different people and see what motivates them, see what their passions are and kind of figure out like how you align with those people as well. I feel like when you choose that one figure for you to kind of relate yourself to, I feel like it kind of like diminishes your opportunity to grow in many different ways. Because let's say, for example, I look at Jay-Z and I just say, I want to be Jay-Z. Like, that's it. I just want to be an entrepreneur. I want to do interviews. I want to do a couple of, like, you know, tracks, whatever the case may be. You're going to lose yourself trying to be that one person. But I feel like if you really, indeed, like, look into other people and look into what they're inspired by and kind of figure out, like, how they execute, like, their visions and their lifestyles, I feel like that's what you should be inspired by. Everybody who counts for that. So I don't have one person. Um, right. So uh, what were your goals uh, as... 
the present as student association. Can we get that? Um, yeah, in the beginning. Go such a shout out to mm -hmm. for the school year. Um, a lot. But to short it, um, I guess like my two main things were just social and academic like success. I feel like academically, I know like a lot of times we can get distracted because there's so many like excited things on campus. Like, your is a dream. Like, it really is. I feel like no student can like deny that. It's true. Like, you know, you're coming from high school. You will paint a certain pitch, of, a certain image of what college is, and then when you get to U Albany, it's like some of that was true, some of that isn't true. But it's like this is like a great place to be. So I feel like for me, I feel like it's easy to get distracted. But my biggest thing is we also push students to get involved. And what are we doing to kind of like, you know, make sure that they have a balance of both? So my biggest thing is I felt like we have like a lot of entertaining programs. And I mean, for anybody who goes to like student organization programs, it's very hard to get people to come to serious things. Like something serious will come up on Instagram and Twitter and we'll go crazy on, on that. But it's like when it comes to actually having to come to a, like a setting, like an LC or humanities room to sit down and like thoroughly have like a debate or a conversation about it, it's hard to get people to do that. So I feel like my biggest thing was, even though I feel like I cannot accomplish that in one year, my biggest thing was trying to like um, establish like different programming, whatever the case is, that will at least allow students to like connect to like professors and fellow students who may have similar passions as them, whether it's academically or about something like, you know, the topics that we talk about on Instagram or social media. So I started something called Scholars. So Scholars is like a, it's like an academic initiative where what we'll do is we'll take like, um, groups of majors and like every month we'll have like programs where it's like alums, it would be professors, it would be students, undergrad and graduate, and they would all be in that setting to kind of like exchange like ideas about like what they study, talk about professionalism, talk about what they want to pursue, talk about mentorship because I don't know about you, but if I didn't have mentors, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I would be like extremely lost. Like everybody needs to be in a setting to like encounter somebody who's going to continue pushing them. So I feel like that, that program itself allowed for a lot of students to do that. So that was the first thing academically. Socially, and I guess socially can branch out into both entertainment and leadership as well. Mm -hmm. Socially, I mean, entertainment-wise, I brought back Fall Fest. And that was like literally like the, like the number one thing I really wanted to <laughs> for that fall semester was, I can say evenly, was doing scholar, um, the Scholar Series and then pursuing Fall Fest again. Because we haven't had it since my freshman year, 2014. Wow. And I thought that was like a great start as a freshman to come to like the school and like go to this big concert because Prior to college, I never went to a concert. I can't afford that. It's like, where am I getting like $120 from to go see like a really like popping artist or whatever the case is? Like, I didn't have that. So for me to know like I'm going to a school where I guess like that cost is already in my tuition itself and I'm paying like $10 to come and see like this big artist that I would never have the chance to see otherwise. Like for me, that's exciting. Like I feel like school is so challenging. It torments your mind. You know, you get a little depressed every here and there because you're human. So it's like, I feel like it's like a gift to freshmen. I feel like it's like you're coming to school, you're still learning, you're still adapting, and then it's like to reward you at the end of the semester, here's a concert, and I hope you enjoy yourself. So, <clears throat> what's your schedule like? Like, how was your first day, especially? What was it like? The first day was like any day of my junior year. It was crazy. <laughs> like, I feel like it doesn't end. Like, there's just always something to do. And I mean, I'm a bio major, I prefer kind of business, I kind of studies a business minor, I do research. I do this, I have a couple of other side hustles as well. So it was just a lot. It's just a matter of like, you know, you get pulled from one direction, being pulled from another direction. This person wants to talk to you. They have a question for you. It's the beginning of the semester. I need you to like look at my work and give us all the privilege. It's just like everybody needs something from you. So it was a lot. But I just, I already expected it and I felt like I was kind of used to it because I've always been a resource to other people. So it wasn't new. You get me? It's not like the it's not the, t the title never gave me purpose. Mm -hmm. I gave it position purpose because I've always been that kind of person to want to do what I do anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot, <laughs> and it still is. So, <clears throat> so is your office an oval with the credits? No, I wish. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> it's like a box, wow. like from that pole to like maybe like around like this chair area a little bit further than that, but it's it's a comfortable spot. Definitely, I don't like it. <laughs> that would be luxurious. Uh, so, so uh, you're a pre med major. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you plan on doing with that? I want to be an OBGYN. Mm. It's obstetrician. I want to deliver babies. So, uh, after college, what's what's next? So, I'm going to take a year off. I'm going to study for my MCAT, um, mm -hmm. I guess, like around May or June. In July, I take the MCAT itself, start applying to schools. God willing, my MCAT score is great <laughs> to even do so. And then, hopefully, by the next cycle, in fall of 2019, I'll be in a where? Don't know. But ideally, it would be nice to stay in New York, so we'll see. So, uh, before you uh, ran for president, uh, 
did you uh, talk to your friends about it? Like, like you know. I just do stuff. <laughs> I honestly just do things. I feel like my parents just know I'm always up to something. And I mean, I could be a better communicator for both my friends and my family, that's for sure. I feel like when I pick up on something, I just start moving at it and I don't rush to like tell my parents right away. Not that they'll tell me not to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just that it doesn't hit me because they just know I'm always doing something. So when I, when I had the idea of running, I don't think I showed my parents. I think it was when I started running, I showed it with my parents. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really tell my mom. I think I told my dad. <laughs> I think my mom found out one on one. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad about that. So, uh, what was their reaction? Oh, super happy. Oh, it, oh, it's that. Like, but I mean, my dad was just like, I mean, well, how how are you not going to win? That's that's an attitude for everything. Like, my father has always trained me to like really chase any dream that I have. So for him, it was just like, what's the surprise? Like, he was happy about it. Don't get me wrong, but he was just like. Come on now, like this is you. Anything you put your mind to, I know you can get it. So he was very optimistic about it, very positive about it. And he was like, he's a dad. Like, you know, I'm his like princess or whatever the case is. So he was just like, like overwhelmed with joy. My mom, she was very happy as well. A little disappointed because I probably should have told her I was running from the beginning and I forgot to do that. But um, like they saw an article about me um, and that kind of like really like, it, it felt real to them. Like when they saw that, it was like, oh, like you're like this, like they're writing about you. Like whoa, like what is this? Like this is serious stuff. Like it's not like some childish student government stuff. But like this is real stuff. Like they can tell like it's something that really has a purpose. And for them, like they were happy to see the job doing that. So you get paid? I guess I. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, That's not in the way. <laughs> I wish it was. That would be nice, huh? So five years ago, ten years ago, ten years ago, would you have seen yourself in this position? Not this position in particular, but if you also do something great, whatever it was. I mean, I didn't really know what college had to offer aside from school and just joining the club, but I couldn't have imagined doing this. And doing the kind of work that I'm doing at that, I couldn't have imagined that. Because I didn't know what kind of college I'll be going to. So, would you say that you uh, sometimes struggle between finding a balance between being president and also, you know, being a full-time student? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I'll be dying. Oh my goodness, no, it's, it's definitely a struggle. Um, once again, especially being a science major, not that other, ma other majors are not as challenging, of course, but it's just like, it requires a lot of reading, a lot of practice, you know, you're taking math courses, there's physics, there's organic chemistry, which is like, literally the most, cha the most challenging science class I have ever taken, like, literally, I had a breakdown taking that class. Like, it made me question my intelligence. Like, it was that bad. If you ever make me like a pre-medical student, they might tell you that organic chemistry probably almost convinced them not to do medicine. <laughs> like, it was really like that. But um, it's hard. It's hard. Like, to spread yourself between, like, your friends and having fun and then doing all these science courses and then business classes as well, for kind of studies classes, because those two things were things that I wanted to do for, like, for fun. Like, I enjoy those topics and I enjoy science, but I need to Cause to just take science classes, I feel like that would just like mess with my brain. Like I need a well balanced mixture of a lot of things. But I took this, I took this on academic leave. My first semester sophomore year, that was not. I never been like that in my life. I was like, wow, like this is real. Like it's like you have this passion and you want to do a whole bunch of things for people and yourself, but you still have to do well in school. You get me? You can't do all these things and then think that you're gonna be here failing and you'll be here next semester because it's not like that. You only have so much time to come back from that. And for me, it was like I gotta get it together. So I mean, fortunately, I did get it back together. Mm -hmm. My GPA has always stayed above a, 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 a 3.0, but it's hard because it's never been a 3.5 either. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what hobbies do you have? I sing. I do anything. I can't draw at all. But yeah, I sing. You sing? But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? <clears throat> mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm stuck. <laughs> stuck. No, I'm stuck. Uh, you have any siblings? I do. I have. So the reason why I'm guessing, I actually discovered like a long lost English brother. So, be able to... so I have six siblings. So there's seven of us now. So uh, how do they feel about you? Um, my little brother. So he's the kind of person that would be very happy for you inside, but he may not jump up and scream for joy to celebrate because you know guys want to be cool all the time. It's like now nah, he's chill, I'm calm. But he was very happy. He was very inspired by it because you know, as a young boy, you know, struggling in school a little bit, you're not focused. You want to play like you know the PS twos and the Xbox and all that kind of stuff. So for him, it was like. Yay, like good job, big sis. I'm proud of you. Then you had like my little sister who was like also the same age as him, 15 years old. But she's like another Juju. So like her energy is like all the way up here. She was like, oh my god, like Jamisa, oh my god, why did it tell? Ah! Like she's on the phone 
girls screaming for joy because like for her it's like you know like she sees her big sister doing all these things she wants to like follow a similar career path so for her it was just like to see my big sister doing all these things like we could not even imagine her doing like that felt great for her and if it felt great for her imagine how it felt for me looking at her get that excited to see me do that well so it was great it was impactful um what organizations are you a part of on campus um far or because there's an extent now that i'm doing oh. this okay so I was more involved with NAACP, the Minority Association of Pre-Medical Students, and then I had SA, and I was on residential life. Um, but now I'm still a part of organizations, but the amount of time I can commit to those organizations is not the same, but those are the main organizations I was a part of. So uh, last but not least, uh, <clears throat> if there's uh, any advice for those that are looking at you and saying that they want to be like you and that you inspire them. Mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give them? Um, you can definitely be inspired. Don't try to emulate my being. Like I said before, like always stay true to your character because your character is what sets you apart from everybody else. But always pick and choose like which, what part of that person you want to emulate, whether it's the professionalism, whether it's the motivation, whether it's like, you know, your ability to strive for things that you felt like were untouchable. You know, whenever you stumble or you fall, don't look back, just keep going. You can reflect. But don't ever ponder on things that you messed up on because that will hold you back. It will traumatize you. You'll stay there in your room in a dark place, you know, just like thinking like, oh my God, how can I have like prevented myself from not doing that? When indeed you should be thinking about how can I make sure I don't do it again? You get me? So always look towards the future. Never look back and ponder on past things because you don't want to be stuck. You want to keep moving. You want to keep traveling. You want to keep pushing forward. Keep striving. Don't limit yourself. Thanks. Thanks for being the first guest. And, uh, Thank you, John.